Hi there, this is Rocky Mountain Pro Referee Josh Spicer, and you're listening to RMP Radio, where pro wrestling is elevated. RMP Radio is back on the air. Hi, I am your host, Mr. Fourthrow, and I know it's been a while. Let's just say sometimes we just have technical difficulties. But as always, joining me uh, here to help uh, preview our uh, big Mile High event that we've got coming up, I've got the Encyclopedia of RMP, RMP journalist extraordinaire, Lucas Bradwell. Lucas, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, it's it's our favorite time of the year. It's spooky season. And you know what that means. Of course, it means Shocktober right around the corner. We're just a couple days away. Uh, always one of my favorite events, probably right after Milestone. It's, it's my second favorite event of the year. Uh, always something crazy happening at Shocktober. So I, I've really been looking forward to, to talking about this event with you uh you, you're right it's been a while uh that since you and i've been able to, to do this so uh, i'm i'm excited to finally get to, to talk to you and and talk about all the craziness that's been going on in rocky mountain pro yeah and how about this it's been a while you, you said just it's been a while it's been a while since uh rmp has had a uh, one of our uh um, mile high events actually at the quarry we a lot of times we've been at uh Beer Sot Lager House just because of uh, timing of the schedule and the calendar. But how about that? First of all, being able to have that on the quarry uh, at the quarry, and then of course, you know, little uh, uh, foreshadowing and preview that we'll be uh, of course having charged the very next day uh, at the quarry as well. Correct. Yeah, the quarry is such a special place, such a special venue. Great place for a big event like this. Uh, so yeah, it's it's always good when you you can uh, have a big show back. Uh, kind of uh, where I like to call home, the quarry. Right, exactly. So let's not uh, dawdle uh, too much here, but let's talk about this event and some of the action that we're going to be seeing. And, of course, uh, everybody else can, of course, see by coming out. Uh, if you can't come out, of course, uh, get the uh, pay-per-view su- subscription on the YouTube channel. Let's talk about the matches and some of the action we're going to get. Uh, first but not least, uh, let's talk about... Uh, we gonna have a tag that we do know uh, some of the stuff we don't know exactly, but we're gonna talk about it here in this uh, episode. Uh, we do have the tag team championship match, uh, Smoke and v- Mirrors uh, versus the uh, Billionaire Boys Club. Uh, tell the listeners uh, about what's this all uh, gonna be happening around on this. Yeah, this is very interesting to me because. We've seen in the tag team division for the past year or so, it was Choppa City dominating the tag team division. Choppa City had you know, been the tag team champions for, what, just about a year? Uh, and, and they had been dominant, uh, really, uh, for the most part, really hadn't had a lot of competition. But then all of a sudden... Get a uh, you get a team like Smoke and Mirrors starting to get some chemistry together. Cushman and Diamond, you know they they both kind of have worked their way up as as you know kind of rough uh, raw talent that you know fresh out of the Al Snow Wrestling Academy, really working their way to to become a good tag team. Things struggled for a while. Things were kind of tough for them, and they get to a point where they get a, a couple opportunities. Uh, couldn't quite get all the way there against Choppa City. And then finally, uh, at our, uh, our last big Mile High event, NRW, uh, they had that very interesting Rocky Mountain Flower match. And <laughs> Smoke Mirrors able to get the the titles, you know, <laughs> kind of uh, – is kind of stacked in their favor. Obviously, that match uh, definitely favored them. 
uh, being under the influence of the Rocky Mountain Flower, but they were able to finally achieve their dream and get, become Rocky Mountain Pro champion, uh, tag team champions. And you've had this t- other team coming from out of state, uh, Class and Reno. These are two rich, uh, very uh, well-to-do, but great athletes. And they've they've kind of taken Rocky Mountain Pro by storm, and they have uh, also tried to lay their claim to becoming Rocky Mountain Pro Tag Team Champions. They've had issues with Chapa City. Uh, a lot of people say that they cost Chapa City a, a chance to regain those tag team titles, uh, which which they have. They've they've gotten involved in matches, making sure that Chapa City would not get those tag team titles, and making sure that. Smoke and Mirrors would remain tag team champions because in Class and Reno's mind, they believe that they have an easier path to the tag team titles, tag team titles going through uh, Smoke and Mirrors. And, you know, you, you kind of have to agree with them. You, you kind of have to, to look at the where Chapa City was and where Smoke and Mirrors was, that it, it kind of is the easier path. Uh, the Billionaire Boys, they were able to... Uh, secure a number one contendership by beating Chapa City in a, a very controversial fashion, but they did. And now they're the number one contenders. On paper, Mr. Fourth Row, you got to think that the Billionaire Boys Club are favorites going into this matchup. You just look at, you know, uh, they're you just, you just look at the comparison in size and strength and even experience. You know, Devin Reno and and class have been doing this quite a long time. Uh, Mick Diamond and Cushman, you know, they're only a few years into their career. It's uh, it looks to be on paper that the Billionaire Boys Club could just run through this, but we know how tough uh, Cushman and Diamond are. We've seen that they they stood up to David Drake. They've stood up to a lot of, of tougher individuals and have have kind of shown something over the past few months that they're not only just you know, this fun tag team, but they are, they are tough and they have a lot of heart. And I think this is going to be a much tougher matchup than what most people might think just looking at this matchup on paper. Right. And, you know, another thing too, there is something to say about when a tag team has and pun intended chemistry with each other. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. And they have a great chemistry. That's something that, that, uh, you know, they might have an advantage of, but then you look at class and Reno and those two have a great chemistry as well. Right. They, so, uh, you know, they've got a lot in common, uh, d- does class and Reno, but also Cushman and diamond have a lot in common. So uh, as far as that goes, I really think it's a push. Um, so th- this could just come down to, to who's hungrier, who's, who's wants it more because it, I, I think, that class and Reno, I, I think they are the the better athletes. But then I, I look at Cushman and Diamond, and I I think they have that X factor. So this is is this is just going to be a very hard fought matchup. And you you got to wonder, it's Chapa City. Uh, are they going to be? Are are they going to be kind of looking at this matchup because they've got some. Uh, some retribution that they might want to get against class and Reno. Uh, you know, the class and Reno have been a thorn in their side. Uh, Bruce Wayne's and the they'll be a little busy as we're going to be talking about later on, but you got to wonder, maybe they'll, uh, uh, they might, they might have a little curiosity in this matchup. Right. Yeah. So true. And what about those vignettes that we've been seeing on charge with uh, smoke and mirrors as well? Have those been wild or what? Hey, I've been there crazy. And that's what you expect out of smoke mirrors. They have a good time. They have fun as they're doing this. Uh, you know, most people are wondering, are they taking this seriously? I can guarantee you they are taking it seriously. It's just, they do it in their own way. They're their own, you know, they do their own thing. Uh, it's very unorthodox, but it has worked for them, uh, getting to this point. So, uh, it, it, it's been fun to watch in class in Reno. They've also been kind of, uh, doing their own training. They've been, uh, traveling down in the Southwest region, uh, kind of not making friends with a lot of their trainees down in Arizona. Then they go to, to, uh, Las Vegas, uh, you know, still wrestling there 
and and making a name for themselves out there. So they're they're keeping ready. They're ready for this matchup as well. So it's two teams ready uh, to uh, become Rocky Mountain Pro Tag Team champions. Will Smoke and Mirrors, will they successfully defend, or will it be new Rocky Mountain Pro Tag Team champions? We're going to find out here at Shocktober. Right, exactly. So next uh, championship match that we're going to talk about is we do have the Lockettes championship match going to be uh, taking place also, too, uh, uh, at Shocktober. That's uh, the champion uh, Noel taking on Lola. And there is so much, I think, when it comes to this match, there is so much happening outside just the matchup of these two of Lola getting there and then everything else that's going on uh, with Noel and her associations. Uh, talk about that. Uh, yeah, I, I know a lot about that. I've, I've had <laughs> some, some, I've had some run-ins with both ladies as of late, um, uh, you know, talking about Noel, uh, obviously that's kind of infamous. Uh, she is now, it seems to be seemingly without David Drake. Right. Has got her all worked up uh, in in a uh, very uh, distraught state of mind. Uh, you know, uh, Dilo and myself uh, tried to confront her. She uh, didn't take kindly to that. I uh, took a beating because of that. Uh, she is she's a very mentally unstable person, but she is the Lockheads champion, and she's very dangerous in that ring. Uh, and now with this, maybe added incentive i don't know if that's what you want to call it but with not having david drake maybe you got to think maybe she's uh a, a little bit even more unstable if if that's even possible and maybe more motivated to try to to prove something uh, on her own i don't i don't know what goes through the head of, of noel and then on the other hand you've got lola who's who's trying to prove something to everyone and and uh do it in a, in a very aggressive way uh, she had an issue with with Mo getting some attention, uh, you know, as I was interviewing Mo and Mo, you know, pouring her heart out right. uh, and, and she inter- interrupted that interview. I've never seen this side of Lola. We're just so aggressive, uh, almost jealous of Mo laying out Mo and, and you know, want demanding that she should get the interview time. She should get the spotlight on her. Well, now she's got an opportunity. She got an opportunity for the spotlight. She got an opportunity to, to be the Lockett, uh, to become uh, Lockett's champion. She's had some opportunities in the past, but this might be her best opportunity yet, Mr. Fourth Row, and it's because of what I stated earlier. There's no David Drake, at least as far as we know. There's no David Drake that's going to be in the corner of, of Noel. Yeah, and, and with that, I was going to say also then with, with Lola – getting a lot of uh, influence or just, uh, you know, pulling from the association with the law office. Just, I just think it's making her a little more aggressive than we've seen too. Correct. Yes. She, she's uh, ultra aggressive. It, obviously a lot of it has to do with her association with the law office, JK pop. You know, she's got a very close relationship uh, with Caden Koyama and uh, we know what, both Caden and, and Johnny Casanova, what those two are capable of. Uh, plus, you've got that corrupted mind of Preston Skymore uh, directing everything. And that, that, all that is just, I think, pushing Lola to be even more aggressive and more motivated. Uh, this could be a big-time opportunity for, for Lola. She might actually finally... Uh, do something she hasn't been able to do, and that's become Lockett's champion. She's done just about everything else. She's had a very successful career here at Rocky Mountain Pro, but uh, this could finally be the the chance she has to become Rocky Mountain Pro champion and finally, or Lockett's champion, and uh, kind of solidify her spot as one of the top Lockett's that we've ever had. Yeah, yeah, def- definitely. Next, here we have before we get into the uh, big portion of what's going to be uh, having all the competitors involved at Shocktober. But we got another match here, and it's the... This one's really, really interesting to, to me. It's it's gonna be, it's called the number one contendership 
However, there's a lot more aspects just to that than what's what's happening. Uh, we've got Mercury Aiden taking on Remy D. And if Remy wins, he gets the number one contendership, the championship title shot that Yaden won uh, back uh, at Colorado Cup. Colorado yes. Cup, right? Yes. Yeah. And then if Yaden wins, he keeps what he's already won, but then Remy is out of RMP. I mean, this is so tangled and weaved in so many different aspects and a lot of more aspects that we've seen before from uh, people, uh, you know, having uh, beefs and issues with Yaden. Uh, you want to pick it up from there? Yeah, well, I think we're forgetting about the biggest uh, kind of swerve in this or curve in this, whatever you want to call it. But D'Lo Brown right. is the special guest referee, and and D'Lo, D'Lo is is the cause of this match, and and D'Lo is the is really the cause of this this whole Remy D situation. I know that it, originally it was Gaiden and and Remy that had issues uh, going back to, to even before Milestone, and and it was you know Gaiden that uh, ended up costing Remy D a chance to become the Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. Uh, but after that, Yaden had hired D'Lo Brown to become the law here at Rocky Mountain Pro. And it was D'Lo's first act. It was his number one priority to rid Rocky Mountain Pro of Remy D. You know, he's tried everything that he could to get rid of Remy D. If Remy D lost the match, even just one match, if he got his shoulders pinned he would be out of rocky mountain pro for good he'd be without a job and it, it just nothing Delo brown has tried has worked he, he's you know put new uh new guys against remedy he's put some of the top talent that we have here at rocky Mount, mountain pro against remedy he's put you know two-on-one handicap matches he's tried everything he's put right you know, put himself as special guest referee before, and, and nothing has worked. Uh, Remy has been able to uh, to survive somehow, and you know it. It's my belief that Delo should have just let this go before, because what it has done is Delo has been obsessed, and and Delo has has really let a lot of other things kind of just get out of hand here at Rocky mountain pro. And, and still here we have Remy D still r running roughshod on everyone. And Remy knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly what buttons to push with not only D -Lo, but with Mercury Yaden. He, he's been in, in complete control of this situation. I, even at times when it looked like he would be gone, and now he's gotten himself into a point where he not only will keep his job, but he will be the, the, he will be the number one contender if he can somehow defeat Mercury Yaden. But it, but here's the thing, and and this is what I I do not believe D'Lo Brown. I don't believe that D'Lo will call this down the middle. He says he will, and he's been in in a, the special guest referee capacity before, where he called it down the middle for a little bit, but then he just let his emotions get to him and he just could not do it. And he tried to screw Remy. I believe that he'll do it again. I just, I just don't think that he can get past his, his obsession. And so uh, I, I'm not sure how Remy D walks out. And it's, it's Mercury Yaden we're talking about, right? We're talking about the founder right. of Rocky pro. We're talking about one of the greatest to ever step foot in a Rocky mountain pro ring. I just – everything that Remy has survived, eventually his luck has to run out, right? Yeah. I, I have to believe that his luck has got to run out. And and Mercury Yedden has worked so hard for that number one contendership. You know, he, he was out of wrestling for almost a year uh, when he, you know, decided to enter the Colorado Cup. He somehow won the Colorado Cup, which was amazing all by itself, you know, he – He's worked so hard. You got to think that he will do everything in his power to keep that number one contendership because it's it's been 
tw- 12 years since Mercury Yaden was the Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. 12 years since he held that title. And he, I know how much he wants to have that belt once again. Um, so it's, it, I just do not see how Remy D can, can walk out, but I've said it before. So I, I've had egg on my face before, but I just, this time I really feel it in my gut that there's just no way he can walk out with, with still, uh, being employed at Rocky mountain pro. Yeah. And the bounty is still in effect, right? It is. It is. I don't, that's Ooh. the other thing. So does Mercury get twenty five thousand as well? Uh, and getting rid of Remy D, you got to think that uh, you know he's not as worried about that twenty five thousand as he is just about keeping his number one contendership and getting rid of Remy. Yeah, I mean that that's crazy. I mean, you know, I think about it too. I mean, I mean, it, it, we could have outside influences in this match uh, that you know somebody because of that bounty still being in effect and. Somebody, you know, causing, causing Remy to lose and getting, you know, wanting to stake a claim to that bounty because of yeah, the, the results they, they influenced. That's a good point. And, and maybe, maybe D'Lo would see it that way as well. Um, you know, and, and the other thing that's kind of interesting to keep in mind, you know, Gaiden has, uh, has kept his word, uh, you know, even though he's got a, a, a hatred for Remy D and, and those two uh, can't stand each other, Yaden still uh, has has some respect and for for Remy, he has some some respect. You know, as when he was the special guest referee in that that four four way match just a few weeks ago on Charged, right. he called it he called it down the middle. He kept his word, and and he's asked D'Lo Brown to do the same. And if D'Lo Brown betrays that trust and, you know, Yaden's not able to prove himself to that he's still got it, may, and maybe Yaden has got some problems with D'Lo Brown as well. So that's another thing to keep an eye on. That's another kind of uh, a little twist in this whole thing. Yeah, true. And, I mean, if that comes to that comes to light, I mean – uh, kind of mixing metaphors. Hell hath no fury. <laughs> fury that uh, scorned uh, Mercury Aiden. Yes, uh, that, absolutely. Because he, this, <laughs> we're talking, you know, Aiden's at the kind of the twilight of his career, right? He's getting towards the end. He realizes it. He doesn't know how many, you know, big runs he's going to have. So, uh, and he he thinks very much about you know having a legacy right here at Rocky Mountain Pro and. He wants to do it the right way. He wants to prove that he still has it, and he wants to do things the right way. He's always been, the, no matter what he's kind of been through, he's always been one that has respect for professional wrestling, wants to to win the belt the right way, do things the right way. Uh, we'll see how things shake out. This is going to be uh, one of the biggest matches that we've ever had at, at Shocktober Uh that is doesn't involve a title. It is a, involve a title shot, but it's you know titles not on the line. But it's one of the biggest non-title matches I think we've ever had. Oh yeah, true. And and you know and uh, we kind of also picking back on a few things that that you said there, Lucas, is that with Yaden, it's not he doesn't necessarily uh, too at this time of his career need all the things, but the important things are important, and you know might as well uh, battle in uh, for him. Correct. Yeah, true. All right. Oh, so there we go. There's the known matchups we have uh, for Shocktober, for especially for the championships. Now we got to talk about the craziness that we have with the Elite Eight tournament that we have uh, been seeing le- leading up to here. I'm sorry. Say that again. Elevated eight. The elevated eight. Oh, sorry. I say elite eight, didn't I? Yeah, elevated eight. It That's is Rocky right. Mount Pro. Where pro yeah. wrestling is elevated. So shame on me. Because I always say that at the end of the show too. <laughs> right. Uh, so, a, go ahead. You were March Madness, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's not. It's not even that season yet. <laughs> but we've got eight competitors all vying for the vacant Rocky Mountain Pro Championship. And if people haven't been paying attention, well, first of all, shame on them. But let's first of all set up why we are where we are now. 
Yeah, the, kind of big news uh, happened uh, just a couple weeks ago uh, when we were up in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, D'Lo Brown made the announcement that uh, David Drake, because he hadn't uh, uh, fulfilled his commitments, hasn't hadn't showed up in a, in a few hadn't shown up in a few weeks, uh, hadn't made any appearances as the Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. Uh, he was being stripped of that title, and he is suspended indefinitely. Uh, no one has seen David Drake, not even, uh, obviously, Noel, we talked about, hadn't seen him. So, uh, as far as we know, David Drake is is out of Rocky Mountain Pro. And, uh, yeah, that leaves us with a, a tournament that has, uh, uh, we've already had some qualifying uh, matches. Uh, we had uh, eight matches over the past two weeks on charge. And now our elevated eight is set for Shocktober. Uh and what a, a group of eight it is. It's it's really the best of the best that we have here at Rocky Mountain Pro. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's talk about the competitors here uh, one by one. And we'll just uh, start off on the list here. We're looking at uh, Shocktober. Uh, first, we got uh, Marty Casaus uh, here he, uh, qualifying to be in this uh, uh, Elevated Eight tournament. Uh, broke off from the law office. Getting a uh, getting a run, getting some momentum, getting in this tournament. What else? Yeah, well, good and good for Marty. You know, he he had been basically almost a slave to the law office, and this is a good uh, opportunity for him to really just kind of uh, finally uh, go branch out on his own. Um, you know, he's had a, a few title shots, the NRW championship and some other things, but this is a huge opportunity because uh, the winner of this tournament wins the title. There is not a number one contendership. This is whoever is the, the winner of this tournament at the end of the night walks away as the Rocky Mountain Pro Champions. So Martin Casals, huge opportunity. And as far as, as the experience goes, uh, you know, with the, an exception of maybe one one other competitor that we're going to talk about later. Uh, Martin is the, is the most experienced uh, person in this this tournament, and he's done it on some big stages. Uh, he's he's got to be one of the favorites going into this tournament. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, let's talk about that other competitor right here. Uh, the other one that you uh, mentioned the, with the experience uh, factor as well, uh, Sin Bodhi. Yeah, Sin Bodhi, uh, tons of experience, uh, very unorthodox, weird individual, but he, he's he's so hard to prepare for, and you, you know he's done a, a lot in professional wrestling, and you know he's never uh, had a chance at the Rocky Mountain Pro Championship as many matches as he's had. You know he's he's uh, was the NRW champion at one point. And so this is another opportunity for for Sin Bodhi to really uh, show that he is, uh, you know, a, a top tier talent. Uh, not obviously uh, at Rocky Mountain Pro, but just in the country, uh, Sin Bodhi becoming Rocky Mountain Pro champion could be a thing. And what a huge deal that would be, not only for Sin Bodhi but for Rocky Mountain Pro. Right. Yeah. So true. You know, and you were just mentioned, and I was just looking at the uh, the competitors in the uh, in this tournament here. All of them have been some form of Rocky Mountain Pro champion, except for Martin Casals. Martin Casals is the only one that that has not had a Rocky Mountain Pro championship. I, so I, that, beg, I beg to differ. The Encyclopedia, the Twitch, oh, cha- yeah, the I Twitch championship, Twitch championship. You're right. I when, just thought about that. <laughs> as, as I was saying that. Hey, I always forget about that because it's a defunct title now. But that, yeah, you're, that, you're right. He was a Twitch champion. The very good way to go. Uh, uh, nice catch there. So yeah, yeah so everyone has had a title. You're absolutely right. And this is, uh, and most of the competitors, or at least I believe uh, three out of the eight, have been Rocky Mountain Pro champions before. That's true. Yeah, I yeah I see that. So a uh, so going from a, the Twitch to maybe the uh, well, we got a lot of actually we got a lot of charge champions in in this uh, in this field too. Uh, We've got uh, Zamore. Zamore, the most recent um, charge champion before it uh, had a little bit of a makeover, I guess you could call it. Uh, <laughs> talk about Zamore uh, battling back up and getting it, uh, uh, you know, it confirmed into this uh, tournament here. Zamore has had a very uh, 
roller coaster career right at rocky mountain pro yeah. had some some very had some uh, very highs and some some really lows here at rocky mountain pro and it, it's and, and this year for him has really been no exception um but he's a guy that when he is completely focused he's as as dangerous as anyone we have at rocky mountain pro he seems to be super focused right now and uh with the chance to become rocky mountain pro champion which i know has been his his major goal his number one goal at rocky mountain pro since the beginning uh, this could, is it to me it is one of the dark horses in this tournament you know i don't know if i would call him a favorite but he's definitely a guy that uh, a little bit of a dark horse and it's crazy to say that zamore is a dark horse but because of how stacked this yeah. LVA tournament is he he really is and it's and a lot of it's because of you know he's He's been a charge champion. He's been an ignition champion, but you know he hasn't quite been at that main event level yet. And so uh, this is a, a kind of a step up for him, uh, being in the tournament that's going to determine the Rocky Mountain Pro champion. But he's he's got a very good opportunity, and I think that uh, you know if I'm uh, you know have a little extra money to put on Zamori, wouldn't be a bad bet. Right? Yeah, because. <laughs> Definitely, a, probably a big pay payoff uh, to when he would gain victory if that came to light. Yeah, I I, I just think this is a this is a a proving moment for for Zamora. We'll see if uh, he's going to step up to that next level uh, to be like the, the main event, the guy here at Rocky Mountain Pro. Yeah. So the next competitor I'm going to talk about that I'm going to introduce here. If you guys watched the the latest version of uh, the Charged episode, this one's intriguing because what? So, all right. So Damon Ace, if you looked at the last episode of Charged that he was on, new look. What yeah. does that? What does that mean? What's the message he's trying to send? Because we know there's something. Because he's what we always call uh, Damon Ace uh, violently intelligent. Is that the we, we always call him? <laughs> Yes, that is exactly what how we describe him on on the Dudes and Belts uh, podcast. But he, yes, he is is sending a message that this is uh, this is a, a different Damon Ace, but maybe. And I, I got I got to be careful with my words because I don't want to upset <laughs> Damon if he's listening. I, I don't know. It's not different, but maybe a, a, even more focused Damon. A little bit of, that he is no nonsense is he maybe even more intimidating with you know not having the facial hair it's it kind of gives him this this look upon him that it's like wow I, I, you just don't know quite what to think and then he you know he's carrying around that weapon that he calls tory mm -hmm. that medieval weapon that's you know got a sledgehammer on one end and an axe on the other end and it's he, he's taken violence to a whole nother level and he, he's just been about as unstoppable as anyone. Um, the, if I'm picking a favorite to win this tournament or, or handicapping this tournament, I, I would say Damon Ace has to be the favorite. It, it just with the momentum that he's got and, and everything that we've seen over the past uh, several months, uh, Damon Ace has to, has to be one of the favorites. Oh, yeah. Def I would definitely agree with that, too, because he has built up uh, you know, got trying to get there so many times, and now there's this opportunity for him being in this, adding the those two factors the the the, the new look, uh, Tory, um, you know, will those you know two items, those two things, uh, you know, push him through? We will have to see when Shocktober happens. Absolutely. All right. Next up. Uh, the competitor here. We've got uh, former uh, Rocky Mountain Pro champion, Atiba. Atiba qualified. Yes, one half of uh, Choppa City, uh, which very interesting because I know we're going to just talk about the next guy anyway, so we'll just kind of uh, bleed these two in together. But yeah. this is the most interesting uh, story of this Elevated 8 because the other half of Choppa City is also in this tournament, Bruce Wayne's. We know how successful Atiba and Bruce Wayne's have been, especially this past year as a tag team. Uh, these two have absolutely been inseparable. They've uh, 
uh, just have been on a completely different level when it comes to tag team wrestling. But now both of these men have an opportunity to become Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. And it's very possible that these two could meet in the tournament somewhere down the line. Right. Uh, you know, we don't have we don't know how the how the bracket's going to uh, shape up. Uh, that'll be announced uh, right before the tournament itself. Uh, but, you know, how crazy would that be if Atiba and Bruce Wayne's have to face one another? Atiba is the only two time Rocky Mountain Pro champion in this tournament. Right. Uh, and he could be he could possibly walk out as the only three time Rocky Mountain Pro champion three times. Yeah. Unprecedented. That, yeah, that's that would, that's crazy to think about if uh, that could be happening. Then that could be uh, the shock of October uh, for the first time having the three time champion. Yeah, that could be one of the one of the shocking moments. I it definitely would be. But, you know, you got to think. Would it really be a shock that shocking? Because look at how successful Atiba has been. I, I, I think sometimes we forget just how great Atiba is. You know, he's been, uh, you know, a, a tag team champion. He's been a charge champion. He's been obviously two time Rocky Mountain Pro champion, the youngest Rocky Mountain Pro champion that we've ever had. The guy's just an incredible athlete. You know, I think sometimes he gets kind of lost in the mix of all the, some of the other guys that we we talk about on a regular basis. But Atiba, when all is said and done, it could go down as one of the greatest that we've ever had at Rocky Mountain Pro. You know, talking about him in the same breath as you know, say a, a, a Curtis Cole or a Stephen Ashburn, Danger Dean, right up to there with those guys. Um, he already is. I think if he walks out with this tournament, I think you could make a very good argument that he's the greatest uh to have ever done it in rocky mount pro yeah so true so true uh so let's uh let's talk to about the uh his uh tag team partner to tease in this as well uh with chopper city and that's uh bruce wayans uh bruce wayans of course former like we mentioned he's a former rocky mountain pro champion and another two factor that you kind of mentioned and i wanted to you know kind of add on to it what great cheerleaders they are for each other when they're um, in a singles match versus a tag team match. They're they're a lot, a lot of times they're out there at ringside supporting their uh, supporting their partner through through their match, uh, helping them through with whatever they can uh, help them through with in in every single match. And I suspect uh, we might see that uh, in this uh, tournament as well. Yes, I, I would agree. I would agree up until the point if they ever have to wrestle each other yeah obviously <laughs> out, the, out the window but yeah you're absolutely right yeah i i believe that if you know one of them lost a, a match you know later on down the line line or whenever uh they would uh they if they weren't going to face one another you got to think yeah they would definitely be cheering for the other one um you got to wonder though if if one of them do, does end up winning the Rocky Mountain Pro Championship. What what will that mean for them as a tag team? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because it's it would be uh, very difficult for a Rocky Mountain Pro Champion to still uh, you know function as a as a tag team. Uh, you know, it just nor I don't think it's really ever been done, uh, at least not as a, a full time tag team. So that would be that would be kind of an interesting thing to see what would happen if one of these guys did. Uh, become Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. I just, I, I know that how uh, strong their relationship is, but even, even the strongest relationships, I would think, would have to to uh, take a back seat uh, to to the Rocky Mountain Pro title. You just got to believe that, and because of uh, you know all the pressure there is on having that title and having to defend that title on a regular basis and right. make it and everything else i, I just this uh this could be a, a a major uh fork in the road for uh choppa city and i know the fans of rock mountain pro are rmp faithful i know they love choppa city and they would hate to see uh you know this team split up and i'm not saying that they would uh, they would still probably be friends. They would still support one another. But I just I cannot see that you know things would continue the same as it's been uh, if uh, one of them walks out as as Rocky Mountain Pro Champion. I just I, I have a hard time seeing that. But the, the, 
this is, is just going to be one thing to keep an eye on uh, among many other storylines that we got going on in this Elevated 8 tournament. Yeah, all, all the uh, plethora of possibilities that could be happening because we don't know the matchups, you know. <laughs> I mean, we talk about that, you know, what is the possibility of a team and Bruce uh, facing the finals? But what about the flip side of that? What if they have to face in the, uh, the, the together to start off the night uh, in in one of the first matches, you know, to get through? Correct. That could be something to do. Yeah, well, that might even be better for them just because they get it out of the way that, you know, and then they can go on, you know, and one of them can cheer for the other one. I, I just I do not know how that's all going to play out. You know, you, you would think that, it, you know, they were they would be able to, to remain friends regardless. But competitive, uh, you know, competition and, and the competitive spirit of wrestlers uh, is a, a very weird thing. And, and sometimes uh, that'll, you know, takes hold and takes precedent over uh, friendship. And so uh, you just you just never know how that thing's going to work out. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's it's yeah, it's, it's hard to say what, uh, what 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 could happen. All right. So also in here, we've have uh, uh, Brew. Brew is in current uh, our, uh, our, uh, NRW champion. He's in here. Uh, possibility of having a, a Rocky Mountain Pro champion holding two belts at the same two individual belts at the same time. Yeah, seen, seen that in a long time. Absolutely, and you know, I, I, I said earlier that Damon Ace is is you know a, a favorite going into this. I would say Brew, if uh, would have to be probably one A uh, when it comes to favorites because of, of the momentum Brew has. Has anybody been as hot as Brew over the past several months? I, I can't really, you know, I can't really think of anybody. I know Remy's, uh, you know, been, uh, you know, surviving. Uh, the, this uh, twenty five thousand bounty and all this uh, other stuff that he's got going on, and 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 Damon's been dominant, but Brew, uh, I think's been as impressive as anybody we've had in Rocky Mountain Pro. I mean, he's he's been dominant in most matches. Uh, the way he's defended that NRW championship has been super impressive. The list of of competitors that he's that he's beaten has been uh, impressive. We've seen. Him, you know, have matches with David Drake and look very impressive, almost dominant. And we've never said that anybody's been able to dominate David Drake. And and yet Brew did uh, at one point. It's uh, really Brew has has just been on this uh, this incline. This uh, that has just been almost like he's got a rocket. Uh, on it, strapped to his back, and he's just been, you know, skyrocketing to the top of Rocky Mountain Pro. Uh, this, my, this might be Bruce Knight. I, I, you know, I'm just looking at at the competition, and although it's it's probably you know the greatest lineup that we've ever had in in, in a tournament, I, I Brew can beat any of these guys. Mm-hmm. I, I know that da- Damon is is dominant, but you look at Brew. I think he can. I think he can match the intensity with Damon Ace. I think he can match strength with Damon Ace. Um, I just don't see the one guy in the tournament that Brew cannot beat. It's if Brew's head is is focused, Brew has as good a shot of anyone winning this title. And it's really been amazing, Miss Fourth Row, that that uh, Brew has actually somehow gotten better since. Uh, Echo uh, left Rocky Mountain Pro. You know, Echo was his mentor. Echo was, you know, kind of, kind of the one that had kept uh, Brew, uh, kept Brew together and and kept Brew focused. But we all kind of thought that maybe Brew would take a step back, and he hasn't. He's got just gotten better and better, and that's been what's really been impressive about this rise that we've seen out of Brew. Right. Yeah. So true. And then the uh, final person that we haven't talked about yet, uh, former, of course, Rocky Mountain Pro champion as well, uh, Dustin Urich. Dustin uh, has uh, gotten a lot of momentum uh, going into this, too. Just keeps on doing Dustin, Dustin things. Yeah, and he's he's got a little chip on his shoulder. I, I don't know. I don't know if you noticed that, but he, you know, I uh, tried interviewing him a few weeks ago. Didn't take too kindly that uh, – 
you know, I suggested that maybe he had, uh, you know, uh, something to prove or something to kind of, uh, you know, get back on track. Right. Uh, he did not like that. He, he, you know, basically wanted to remind everyone of just who the hell he is. He's, you know, the longest reigning Rocky Mountain Pro Champion of all time. Held that same title for two years, and um, you know, looking to become Rocky Mountain Pro Champion again. And he, so, you know, with a guy with that much experience, uh, you know, we we did talk about Martin Casals and we talked about uh, Sin Bodhi. Uh, you know, Dustin has a lot of experience as well. Most of his experience has come uh, here in the state of Colorado and, and primarily Rocky Mountain Pro. But, you know, long time guy on nearly 20 years of, of professional wrestling. Um, and when you get a guy like that who has a little chip on his shoulder now, that's uh, that makes for a very dangerous opponent. And he is going to be extremely difficult to get out. And he could be another one that that. Uh, could win this as well. You, you just look at it. We look, look at everyone we've talked about. Uh, you can't say that there's a clear cut favorite, and you can't say that there, there's you know a clear cut underdog in this tournament. Uh, it's just it's it's unbelievable the talent. And the other thing that you know we forget to mention is there's still a lot of bad blood between Dustin Urick and Damon Ace. Mm-hmm. And what if uh, you know that? that issue never really got completely solved. You know, they've, they've kind of seemed to have uh, come to an agreement to kind of squash that. (laughs) At least it seems like, but you know, if those two run across each other in the tournament, well, you got to think that uh, emotions are going to boil over and, and who knows what that is going to look like. So there's just (laughs) so many things, so many possibilities. This is just going to be a crazy tournament. And I believe that uh, Shocktober is going to live up to its name. We're going to see something that's going to shock us all. Um, and it's, uh, you know, just what we what we have come to expect at Shocktober. Expect the unexpected. Right, yeah. It, so for so to live up to its uh, moniker and its name. If you had to, if you, if you had to logically or maybe illogically or just pick with emotion or heart, you have a you have a pick you you think you might persevere and uh, come out of this as the Rocky Mountain Pro champion. You know my my head is telling me that that Damon Ace is the guy that can walk out uh, with the Rocky Mountain Pro champion. But you know sometimes I like to go uh, go with my heart and um, I'm going I'm going with Brew. Going with Brew, interesting. I'm going with Brew. Uh, you know, Brew and I are, are no longer are no longer friends, but I still uh, have a special uh, place uh, for Brew in my heart, uh, knowing uh, what that man has been through, what he's you know battled through uh, with his health and and so many other things, and seeing as how dominant he's been, uh, you know, there's a part of me that's rooting for Brew, and, and there's a part of me that really thinks that that Brew can do this. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I believe that Brood's going to walk out and become a dual champion. Interesting. I, I like that. Uh, as for myself, if uh, people are curious, I'm, I'm kind of going that same way. I'm going with 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 heart, and I'm picking Dustin. And the couple of reasons why I am is because uh, you know being the longest uh, Rocky Mountain Pro champion in history, and then also he came back after being gone for quite a while. And he's been, you know, going to a lot of our uh, shows, our, our our house shows per se, as the cliche goes, that, uh, you know, people have to be there in person to see. And I think, you know, he's re- just really hitting it hard and, and getting out there and, you know, hey, he came back and maybe he wants to be Rocky Mountain Pro Champion again. Who knows? Oh. I believe. Oh well, he definitely wants to be Rocky Mountain Pro Champ. There's no doubt about that. Um, and it's it. it you got to wonder though, is that in, in this part of his career, is is that something that you know he is uh, uh, going to be ready for uh, to do it all over again because of the demands of it? I, I believe he he absolutely is. I just talking to the guy. He's he's definitely uh, got what it takes to uh, get there once again. All right, so got that question. Next question. 
What would be the, we led up to it, we kind of teased with it, Shocktober. What would be, we always want to have that shock in the Shocktober pay-per-view. What would be a, what would be the shock for you at Shocktober if you saw it happen? What would you like, what would you like to see or educated guests or passionate guests of what that shock could be? Well, it, it's, it's not what I'd like to see, uh, but there's just a, there's a part of me, Mr. Fourth Row, that has a hard time believing that David Drake just walked <laughs> away from Rocky Mountain Pro, right? Yeah. I, I just have a hard time believing that. And, you know, I, I, I thought that before, and the guy shows up, and, you know, and then I thought he was he was different. You know, I thought that maybe he'd, he'd got a little human side to him, and that went away, and I, I just... For me, it wouldn't be a shock, but I think to the Rocky Mountain Pro faithful, it would be a shock if David Drake comes out and somehow uh, puts himself, interjects himself in this tournament, or even uh, somehow interjects himself uh, into the the whole Mercury Yaden Remy D D'Lo Brown situation. I just, I, I just do not see uh, David Drake just being able to walk away from Rocky Mountain Pro just like that without anything. Without you know, without it, a trace of anything, I, I he could pop up anywhere. I just know this guy. I obviously my history with him. I just that could be a possibility. Oh my goodness, you must be reading my mind because I wasn't quite exactly specific, but my my thought was, what about a surprise return of somebody? And you know, this would be a surprise return. Uh David Drake did do a surprise return way, way, way at the back of the beginning of this, towards the beginning of this year, the first uh, quarter of this year. Uh, remember Rumble at the Loud House? Yeah, I absolutely do. <laughs> I, I, that, it, it surprised the hell out of me. So, that yeah, that's uh, that is a huge surprise. Uh, but you're right. Returns happen here at Rocky Mountain Pro as well. There's, could, there's a, a number of guys that have kind of been on my mind of also who could return. Yeah, and you know, behind the scenes talking to uh, somebody, uh, you know, just we're just talking about, you know, uh, some of the, uh, you know, the the first uh, golden era at uh, the quarry of uh, Rocky Mountain Pro, and you know, this is I feel like this is our our next one, uh, being returning home, like you said, it's towards the beginning of this uh, episode here, and uh, so I mean, it's, that just kind of made me think, what if that is just kismet and just you know, happening for uh, Shocktober this, this year. Yeah. It, 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 anything can go at Shocktober. I think we've seen it in the past and especially what we've been witnessing this year. It has just been absolute chaos. So, so absolutely anything could happen. Um, it would not surprise me, but uh, you know, still I, I, I would be shocked uh, if, if we saw a return that of it, someone that we haven't seen for a while. Yeah, that would be awesome. All right. So listeners, there we go. We got the preview here for, for uh shocktober. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, uh pay-per-view back at the quarry uh, this time around. Uh, uh, so it's going to be a, a fun time to uh, be there. So let's do some due diligence. You guys want to be there. Get uh, those tickets at uh, rmpwrestling.com. Uh, there's also a, uh, if you get uh, Shocktober tickets, I believe you also get uh, tickets for uh, Charge the next day. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, we're doing a, a two-for-one special. Yeah, get get have a whole weekend of uh, wrestling action. That's just the, one of the best deals in, in the entire state of Colorado for entertainment. You can't beat that, uh, you know, it, with – Going out on a Friday night, getting to see Shocktober, uh, and then coming back the next night, get to be a part of our TV tapings of Charge. Uh, just oh, what a fantastic way to uh, uh, have your weekend starting off. Yeah, so true. And then, of course, uh, you know, if you unfortunately cannot make it due to uh, distance, timing, whatever, uh, you know, get on that uh, Rocky Mountain Pro t- uh, YouTube channel. Get that subscription for nine ninety nine, which will let you watch uh, Shocktober uh, when it's released to the channel, and then of course 
can watch all the charged episodes, participate in the chat, go back and watch the full library of uh, of uh, Rocky Mountain Pro uh, pay per view and charged episodes as well. Yeah, there's just so much content, just uh, literally thousands of hours of contents to go through. Yeah. So true. All right. Well, Lucas, I, I think we've got it everything there for the for the listeners. Uh, a big uh, mile high event uh, events uh, weekend for uh, action packed uh, pro wrestling for uh, Rocky Mountain Pro this Friday and Saturday. Uh, of course, I want to thank you for, of course, joining me once again uh, to help preview before I let you go. Uh Plug everything that you've got uh, going on, social medias, uh, everything else you do for uh, Rocky Mountain Pro and the etc. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you can follow me uh, on X or on Facebook, uh, Instagram as well at RMP Journalist, uh, and uh, don't forget uh, also on the weekends, both on on Saturday mornings, uh, ten o'clock Mountain Time. I am on uh, the Dudes and Belts. Uh, wrestling show as we do recharged on our Rocky Mountain Pro Twitch channel. Uh, I usually join uh, Maki Pins, Johnny Death Drop, and Coastal Crusader as we review uh, the, the previous episode of Charged. And then on Sunday nights, seven o'clock Mountain Time, you can uh, watch as we go back in time to watch old episodes of uh, NRW Charge and, and and some of our old content. Uh, in in the entire history, the 14 year history of of Rocky Mountain Pro, uh, that's our Rocky Mountain Pro Rewind, and uh, so that's uh, some of the great content we have going on. And yeah, and then also don't forget all the great. Uh, this is the last month, I believe, of the Bruise and Bruises tour uh, for 2024, uh, at least for the outdoor shows. And you can uh, catch me as I'm uh, ring announcing for a lot of those shows. I know we still have one more show at Romero's uh, up in Lafayette. We got one more show at Summit Tacos, and I believe even one more round at the Mile High Flea Market. So, uh, and we got beer stock coming up uh, next Friday as well, the Great American Beer Fest. So, so much great stuff happening. Yeah, and uh, I wanted to, when you uh, said the outdoor shows, I was going to say weather permitting. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> oh my God, it seems like uh, you know, unfor- I mean, it's just like it's like Romero's. If people don't know if, that to go, the Romero's just seems to be uh, uh, getting the unlucky odds of we always get rained on. It seems like when we go to Romero's. Yes, it, yeah, it has been. A- it has been kind of crazy, but we've had some unusually warm weather uh, so far starting off uh, this fall season. Yeah. Very unusual. So we're going to see maybe it'll hold up for a couple more weeks. Uh, well, it'll be interesting. But yeah, it'll. Uh, but you can always, yeah, always come out to those shows. Uh, say hi to me. Say hi to Mr. Fourth Row at the merch table. Uh, it's a good time. Exactly. All right. Well, Lucas, uh, once again, thank you for joining me on uh, this edition of. Uh, rmp radio and i'll be uh, seeing you this uh, weekend looking forward to it can't wait once again a big huge thank you to lucas bradwell for coming on to this edition of rmp radio and helping preview this year's shocktober mile high event so like you guys heard at the beginning of this episode there was technical difficulties basically uh the reason why i've been absent is because my computer uh, had a little uh, trouble and i think also because i was trying to get everything set up but this is the first episode back i didn't have my external microphone selected for the skype call so that's why I promised to sound a little tingy, so I promise to hopefully get that corrected in the future. Anyways, once again, let's remind you this upcoming Friday, Shocktober pay per view for Rocky Mountain Pro. Get those tickets at rmpwrestling.com. Get the tickets for Shocktober, and you also can attend Charge the very next day, those recordings, which are always going to be fun. And this weekend, of course, we're going to be at the quarry, so that's going to be great. Before I get out of here, let's uh, pay some bills like we used to say back in the day. 
day. Support your favorite Rocky Mountain Pro superstars by heading over to the merch table, uh, buying a shirt, buying a sticker, buying a photo, things of that nature. Of course, also check with them to see if they have a Pro Wrestling Tees or a Brain Buster Tees and, and the like as well. I do have some uh, RMP Radio shirts still available on hand. I'd like to get flushed through those. That would be awesome. Uh, pretty much have like a little bit of just basically bigger sizes left, so that's great. Uh, support everybody. That's the, the biggest thing we like to say. Of course, uh, follow us out there on all the social medias, uh, the YouTube as well. Everything is RMP Wrestling, whether it's YouTube, like we said, to watch all the shows, uh, on the Facebook, the X, the Instagram, uh, everything out there. Of course, follow us out on uh, Rumble as well. That would be great and everything like that. Once again, thank you for uh, listening to this edition of RMP Radio, where pro wrestling is elevated. Yeah.